<clears throat> All right, guys. Welcome to our fifth edition of the Stay at Home Open Mic, presented by the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. My name is Richie Marufo, and as always, I'm your host. I'm the project director of this whole thing. And I want to welcome you guys um, <clears throat> who are tuning in right now to our YouTube channel. If you haven't had a chance already, I definitely encourage you guys to um, share the link with all your friends, with all your network, and more importantly, show support for everyone who's performing, all the poets, musicians that are here with us. Um, let us know that you're watching and, and leave a comment. We do have the, the YouTube chat. You guys can hit that up, or you can even just leave a, a comment on, on the video below because this will exist past the live stream. So if you're watching live now, let us know you're watching live with us. With that said, we got a bunch of awesome poets with us right now. You guys want to make some noise and let people know you're here with us on the chat. And then you guys can unmute and stuff and, and make some noise. Everyone's everyone's being oh. very, very, oh. very everyone's being very patient. Yeah, there you go. Woo! <laughs> 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 I guess it's okay. Where? <laughs> where oh, that was a good one. Good. I was kid there, huh? All right. So I'm really looking forward to forward to today's show. Um, as always, it's a it's a nice mix. We do have a lot of poets. I've always been hoping for a little bit of more uh, poetry representation. And with that said, we're going to go and start off with uh, someone who we all love to hear poetry from. She has a, a couple of books out, including her, her most recent, which is called Flow. It won the Southwest Book Award. She's in the house. Guys, let's go and welcome our first performer. Let's hear it for Robin Schofield. Yay! Hey, everybody. Well, I'm just as happy to be going first as any other place, so. I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm going to read two poems about coyotes, and then I'm going to read two poems about tomatoes. So first two are kind of sad. Coyote meets the raven. A pup about five months old lies dead on the dam between the three sister hills. Ravens surround him, a family of nodding undertakers. His pelt stripped off his blood-baked backbone, the whole arc of his vertebrae visible, a rusty bridge spanning white water. The fluffy bony tail curls out, dead for several days and no rebirth, just recycling of eyes and innards till the park cleanup crew drives by and shovels the remains into the back of their truck. So the ravens call to their kin to move on to other be dead beings, their life in the desert. All right, and this one is called Heat Death of the Universe. Coyote knows dawn and slips over the third dam. Time to feed the young and settle in while the sun bakes behind North Peak of the Franklins. I know an old Jeep trail you can spend your time climbing. Mountains move in geological time. A stone wears down, rain takes it to a sandy riverbed, though the river won't flow come fall. Time breaks it in fields where crops know to blossom then bear. The bee knows her dance. At maximum entropy, I cannot tell the story better than sparrows scattering. All right, thank you. And now this is some new stuff. <laughs> new, new shit. New, new shit. shit. Yeah. So, um, tomatoes, uh, if you grow tomatoes, they have really weird names. Early girls. So fragile, let's not plant you yet, seedlings on the new moon. You are too small under the grow lights and on the heating pads. On the full moon in March, let me take you to my garden where I have amended and watered the soil for you. I will plant basil beside you, chili peppers nearby. 
Let the ladybug larvae devour the aphids and rejoice in the dying cilantro. A new spring season, it's always been here. Thank you. And this one is called Celebrities. They crave daily attention, unlike the distant stars. These guys pull me from my orbit with their dimpled cheeks before they get blossom in rot from uneven refreshment, before they develop cat face from too much plastic surgery or incomplete pollination. I despair over these celebrities on my watch, their young faces deformed. In spring, I put on the wind cloth to protect the young stalks from the ravages of April wind. When they are dead, do we wrap them in the winding cloth? No, burn them if the leaves are yellow. Their season has to be warm, but not too hot. They will stop flowering, light bulbs going out. Cameras on, the fans demand blood at the butcher shop, but not for these celebrities in the garden. They don't apply makeup to their skulls and they cannot give autographs. They do not pursue fame, fleeting as the jackrabbit across the desert. Okay, hey, thank you. Yeah, there's a variety of tomato called celebrity. So that was a natural. And then I want to read one uh, from Stanley Kunitz, also a gardener poet, The Snakes of September. All summer I heard them rustling in the shrubbery, out racing me from tier to tier in my garden, a whisper among the viburnums a signal flashed from the hedgerow, a shadow pulsing in the barberry thicket. Now that the nights are chill and the annuals spent, I should have thought them gone in a torpor of blood, slipped to the nether world before the sickle frost. Not so in the deceptive balm of noon, as if defiant, of the curse that spoiled another garden. These two appear on show through a narrow slit in the dense green brocade of a North Country spruce, dangling head down, entwined in a brazen love knot. I put out my hand and stroke the fine grit the fine dry grit of their skins. After all, we are partners in this land, co-signers of a covenant. At my touch, the wild braid of creation trembles. All right, thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Oh, what, a, what a great last line. The breed of creation trembles. Shout out to to Robin and all the gardener poets. I love it. Dropping some some knowledge all around up in here. Um, thank you for sharing, Robin. Always always a pleasure. Do you have anything you'd like to promote or, or share today? By the way, um, I'm gonna have another book come out from uh, Street of Trees Press, but that's in the future. I don't know when. It's gonna be called Diurnal Disturbances. Awesome title. Okay. Shout out, shout out to the feature. <laughs> Can't get here sooner enough. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Well, once again, welcome guys to Stay at Home Open Mic. My name is Rich. I'm your host. And if you guys are tuning in on YouTube, leave a, a comment. Let us know that you're watching. If you're watching from anywhere, let us know where you're watching from. I think uh, one time we had someone from from Puerto Rico. Let us know that they're watching. We had pe people from New York City and London watching. So, um, yeah, leave a drop a comment. Let us know where you're, where you're watching from. And we're going to try and keep this as smooth as possible. You know, this isn't the perfect replacement, but, you know, maybe perfection is the enemy. Let's let's just do our thing and do it proudly. 
Um, so with that said, we're going to keep it going with the poetry tip. Uh, we have, let's see, that I said Miss Versatility, right? Yes. Hi, all right, cool. So welcome. How, how are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm oh. fine. And you? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing a lot better now that we're here all sharing and um, yeah. it, it does, it does something being able to hear people do their thing. And you're, oh, yeah. uh, you're joining us from Washington, D.C., right? Yes. Cool. Where all the craziness is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's craziness. But uh, we want to welcome you. You've got some poetry for us. Uh, do your thing. Yes, let's go and welcome Miss Versatility to the mic. Hello, everyone. Um, this first piece, I'm not sure if it's the very first one I ever did, but it's the first one that I, I let be known. And it's called New Orleans Symphony. Like a maestro conducting the strings and harps of his symphony, your passion flows deep to a tune of its own inside of me. As the pianist tickles the keyboard with such perfect timing, you're touching the uttermost part with your powerful rhythm. Like the pulsating, tones of bass, violins, trombones, or guitars. Ramparts of steady beats are bursting in my heart, whispering in my ears rhetoric of sweet innuendos that you choose. From you, I'm hearing a collection of the concerto, the opera, and yes, even the blues. So as our bodies resound to melodious ecstasy, we'll always remember and savor the production of a New Orleans symphony. And from that, I did a, uh, a part two. Realizing this isn't the original piece, trying to come close, now allowing its meaning to cease. Attempting to recreate and rehearse every time, remembering melodious scenes that traveled through my mind. Rewinding each track down from finish to start, vibrating ramparts continually beat in my heart. Demonstrating that our piece has rhythm and rhyme, years serving to prove we haven't lost our place or timing. Living as we still find a way to blend, leaving lines of open dialogue that move, never seem to end. Musing you as my concerto master and me as your concerto, playing our notes in syncopated tempo, enjoying the music as we do our dance, striking harmonious chords of our fate or chance, tuning each measure to fit our melody, Stroking of our keynotes, bringing orgasmic finality. Discordance of our production or prelude has its round, etching the timeline we often have found, anticipating what the encore will finally be, releasing the production of another New Orleans symphony. Do I have time for another one? Oh yeah, absolutely. Jump into it. Let's hear another okay. symphony. Well, this one was done uh, when 9-11 happened. I was sitting in my daughter's room and not knowing where they were or how they were going to get home. So I started writing this piece during 9-11. It's called The Way They Sing. As a child, I thought people performed misdoings because they were mean, but given my life's experiences and outlook, things aren't the way they seem. We hustle bustle and go about our daily lives and routine, but after all is said and done, things just aren't the way they seem. I try not to judge, blame, or criticize. I try to see the good and otherwise. It's hard to keep a stiff upper lip or quench the hurt and pain, but I can't for the life of me understand why this leaves such an ugly stain. I keep telling myself this too shall pass. 
in order to get through another scene. But no one can make me believe things aren't the way they seem. Every act, word, or deed ever granted, hoped for, or promised has gone with another dream and confusion thrust upon us. I struggle to compose all emotions as my faith I still cling, but don't dare look in my eyes and say things aren't the way they seem. How do I respond to the rejection or a simple misguided conception? How do I pick up the pieces and head in another direction? Do I face off with intentions of the problem being resolved or do I let God do his will and settle it for the cause? My mind and heart are racing as I manage to absorb all I've felt, heard, or seen. So until my questions are answered, let me keep thinking things are what they seem. Thank you. Yeah, right on. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Versatility, do you have anything you'd like to promote or share with us today before you take off? Uh, nothing. I'm just, I'm just putting my, my work out there. I've, I've been hounded by so many family members and friends that I should put it out there. And so when I saw this on Facebook, I was like, wow, this is a sign. <laughs> and thank you for answering and responding as timely as you did. And I'm glad to be a part of this and look forward to doing more. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm glad you were able to find us as well. And yeah, we're doing this every Monday for the foreseeable future. Um, okay. I, I do like this as an alternative. So, you know, even as things slowly start opening up, okay. um, you know, not, not biz places aren't for everyone. So and also we get an opportunity to connect with people globally. Right. Um, so so thank you, Miss Versatility. Appreciate it. Let's go give a round of applause. Everyone here on the chat. <laughs> thank you. All right, right on. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, making sure everyone is getting in on the chat just fine enough. Um, you know, I've got people emailing me for links. I'm trying to take care of that as well. Uh, what else can I say? So yeah, just come out, do your, do your thing, do it, you know. Uh, can, oh, big tip, I, I mentioned this on the sign up sheet, if you guys noticed, um, enc I encourage you guys, if you guys can maybe make a sign with info so people can donate. I've, I've made mine right there. The very first one we had, we actually did have a, a viewer who was willing to donate um, to all the performers who left their information. So you never know, um, it, it helps. I guess anything helps. It's cool to get tipped for your work um, right now, as I mentioned. So we're gonna go ahead and, and keep going with the open mic. Thanks to everyone on YouTube. I see uh, we have our friend Sandy there, Sandra Torres. Uh, we have Chris Robinson. Uh, the badass poet who used to join us at, at the at the BWAMs back in the days. And, uh, you know, I, I'm glad you said you're a Chris because uh, you're you're logged in as, was it, uh, we're reading Sexual 26, but I might have read that wrong. I need glasses, but it's uh, Chris Robinson, Jaime Diaz. We've got uh, a couple people watching from different places. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, bring up, this is our, we're going to have a first time poet, first time participant. And of all places, it's it's our digital stage. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I've, I've heard little snippets of her of her words here and there. So guys, uh, let's go and give her a big, huge welcome. Let's go and, and welcome Alia to the stage. Alia to the stage. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying. I know this. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I'm, I don't know. Why I'm saying it like this. I'm just nervous. Okay, I'm just oh, nervous. So am I. It's okay. <laughs> all right, let's be nervous together. All right, do your thing. Okay, um, so this is a two-part piece. Um, a privilege to love. There's a shortage of warmth in this world. A child cries, a father yells. An accident turned into a purposeful gesture of ignorance. Flinching at the sound of a crash, a thud, a howl waiting for a moment to pass, hoping it won't last. Make it stop. We flinch, we cringe. The feeling runs cold. Your right to love, a shortage of warmth. I am love, I am warmth. The softness of my touch, the intensity of my gaze, 
the lamb fights regardless of the wolves bite. I will bleed, I will flinch at the harshness of living, but I will not allow for my touch to go cold. Feel the love as I lay my hand upon your cheek. Feel yourself cower at my softness. Will you raise your hand angrily toward every person you meet, hoping one day someone will feel, see, feel your pain, someone to validate the sound of a howl. In the years, years, years it took for a moment to pass, make it stop, please no more, make it stop. A hardened gaze, teeth clenched, paranoia. Soften your gaze, relax your jaw. Find solace in the knowledge that you can convert pain into love. We all want to be held in its warmth. Cool. Thank you, thank you. So that's 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 all for me here. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a uh, hey. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and also, if you guys are, are watching on YouTube, uh, we I, if you, you can see each other, so we're we're snapping. So if if you know we're trying to respond, but like quietly, so people can still do their thing. Um, did you did you ha have one more? Did you, did you see that was it? Oh no, that that's it. Just two parts. Awesome. Do you have anything mm -hmm. you want to promote today, or, or just share? With them? Um, well, this is my first time doing uh, an open mic, but I'm interested in continuously doing it more, just so I could get my writing out there because it's all in books all the time. So I need it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right on. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, you're always welcome at, at uh, anything we do. BWAMS is, is for us. It's for everyone. Especially, you know, if you got a voice, something you want to share. Um, I really, I think you have a, you have a really good reading voice. Thank you. You know, you, you didn't, you know, it seems like you're, you, you, you came off as a veteran. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. So awesome. So thanks. Thanks again. Um, yeah. And, and uh, if you guys are on the chat, let us know, man, you're getting a lot of claps and praise on the chat. I don't even see it. <laughs> so on on youtube so yeah we'll, we'll see you guys more there all right so we're gonna go ahead and and continue um try and get everyone on so i know dan just for a second can are, are you still with us dan are, are you ready <laughs> yeah hold up i was checking i was checking my internet um that, it was it was, it, it was a down for a bit hold okay on. Okay, that's fine. Dan, Dan, you're going to be next. We have another poet before you, and then you'll be next, okay? Got it, Dan for. Cool. All right. So joining us from New York. All right. I'm really glad that we you were able to find your way. We have uh, Yael Sweitz in the house. I hope, yeah. uh, hopefully I didn't say that too. I mean. No, you, you... you've got it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so... yeah I'm Yael Sweitz. Uh, and um, yeah, I... I'm happy to be with all of you guys tonight. Um, can you hear me okay? You sound great, yeah. Um, take it away, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, I'm glad to be here, yeah. Awesome, take it away. Okay, just, okay. Luna forming. I jolt across the room, interstellar dust, comet tails sparking up in every direction. The air is a fire. I'm an asteroid belt, but you burn steady, slow. Your gravity gives me direction. Carousel horse marveling all the while. You regard my dusty surface, my craterous complexion, smooth me out. You remind me that moons inspire lore, that the way I see myself, lifeless, pockmarked, gray, bears no resemblance to Artemis or to any ancient moon myth those hundred goddesses forms glowing in the twilight you kiss my round head send me spinning you give me my axis you say luna you're enchanting tonight okay. that's one <laughs> um okay and this next one is called little thing uh little thing shake the stench of death in the air 
rattle your lungs with one strong cry that reverberates through a house too full of silence. Turn red as ever flesh was, and by your presence, rosy the walls, white paint, dingy with age. Bring with you varicolored fleeces, cotton stuffed beasts, fairy chatter. The grandparents will coo like old birds and say that they're full of love, that it was love that they always wanted. But they'll miss the, flip, the gift of flight you give, the lesson in astonishment and seeing rainbows in oily water. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. Can I do one more? Fantastic. Okay, um, so here we've got Sarah. Sarah, matriarch, good witch. Her eyes hazel moons, gray curls spinning into my brown ones materializes. She shelters me from deluge, hands me feathered arrows on each visit, feeds me crumbs of sanity till I can keep them down. This is Sarah, not the mentor I pictured, ancient and graved in her desert, but laughing, buoyant, with her sorceress's intuition, her measureless magic words. Aboard her whaler, we harpoon fears, stretch our fingers across oceans. She, lodestar, burns bright. Inside her cabin, we summon fireflies, spell out wishes on log walls, whisper. This is therapy. This, not the hundred other times I've tried. There's no disconnect. She calls, I follow. That's all. I grow into her twin hazel eyes like mirrors, spinning curls. I feather my own arrows now, feed crumbs to other folk, wield my own magic. Still I turn to her in wonder, apprentice glowing in her lightning, like the moon. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, right on. Yeah, uh, was, was that it, did you add more? I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, um, I, I do have other pieces, but I'm just going to take this moment to plug my website, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, elevates.com. I've got it written over here, but I'll just put it in the chat if anybody wants to check that out. Cool. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And uh, you mentioned in your, in your sign up that you have about up to 10 poems already published and you're working on your own chapbook. Do, that's that's yeah. very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's in the works. So you can keep up with me. Um, it's yeah, elevates on Facebook as well. So anybody who would want to can go ahead and do that. But I'm just so glad to be here and you know hear from you guys. Cool. And you're and you're calling in from New York City right now. Yes, I am. Yeah. Right yeah. on. Well, welcome all the way from uh, the Southwest U.S. El Paso, mm -hmm. Texas. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Glad to have you here. So. All right. Let's go and get a round of applause for Yael. Yael, thank you for joining us do the the snaps <laughs> so much easier yeah, yeah <laughs> all right you don't need two hands <laughs> so uh, i'll i'll snap with two hands just to <laughs> just to do it now um okay so um next up we're gonna bring a bwoms classic you can find them at almost all of them um if you by the way if you guys haven't already follow us on social media El Paso BWAMS. BWAMS is Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. You can just type in Barbed Wire Open Mic Series and we'll show up pretty much anywhere. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, follow. Something we've been doing on our Instagram page is uh, something that, I don't know, I just barely thought of it this week, but to, to feature little snippets from these open mics. So um, it's a cool way to share. And, uh, you know, button poetry is so big. All these, all these sites that, that feature writers i think we should do that too you know because everyone has a voice to be heard and we just uh, want to give people that platform so with that said and speaking of platforms uh, our next performer is, is you know a big supporter of of everything el paso you would find them at out at most of the concerts supporting a lot of the musicians um he has his weekly video blog series dan the man's weekly this is the big intro dan are you ready are you here with us and the man must be let's see i think dan are you here okay <laughs> we had this we had this th I'm great I'm, I'm excellent i'm excellent man we had this thing last week where where you weren't ready to perform when did you see the little highlight clip i made of that island clip uh, uh, highlight uh, high, highlight Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I saw that. <laughs> you said you're in the computer, and and Kit Kit chimed in. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, okay. Again, thank you. Uh, those of you who made a performance on poetry, thank you very much. It was so thoughtful of you guys. Uh, appreciate it. And that lady from New York, what's her name? Uh, Yael. Yeah, that was, cool, that was a cool performance, my friend. Yeah, and the rest, uh, and the rest of everybody, um, great, great performance. Okay, and just like, um, just like I matched, uh, I managed to finish this off. Uh, I just started since yesterday, so I guess you're gonna like this one. Um, yeah, have you ever heard of? I don't know if you heard of the GFM band. They hail uh, those three ladies hail from uh, from. Uh, from Jacksonville, Florida, and they had their outstanding rock band, rock songs, and with uh, with cool, with uh, with the appearances of uh, of a little rockness and a little cheer and a little something that takes up the takes up the name, if you know what I mean. Okay, and you guys are gonna like this one. I did did this out of you guys are gonna like this one, All right? And it is called the. GFM band, gold, Frank and cheese, and myrrh, or myrrh. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if I pronounced this correctly. So, All right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. The GFM band, gold, Frank and cheese, myrrh. Um, all right. Three uh, meanings of the word: precious metal, perfume, and anointing oil. Which I like to say, prize decorations with with honors. And the scent of fragrance, and the uh, the aromatic resin of the plant, sweet Cecily. Three bands, the bands of three words representing those three ladies: Maggie, Lulu, and CJ. Wise rockers taking the stage with shock and delight at day and night, representing the genre: heavy metal, alternative, mostly rock. The that's the genre on top with garage rock, a post grunge rock that don't block sounds already. The rock is already locked. <laughs> Mixing the themes of rocks within guise of horror and dark tales, but with cheer and kindness and faith, but never fear in guise. Uh, you won't believe your eyes that they cheer <laughs> with when you see them but strive with hard rock and soft acoustic set it overdrive <laughs> sounds like uh, old school bands like pantera pod lita ford soundgarden 311 um lincoln park a uh, little bit of rob zombie but minus butt cherry uh, that's a lot <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right just like from just like from the Runaways to the Donnas, giving a pedal to the metal rock a whole new level. Careful, they are wise, not evil lies. In guise of the eyes, never again. And no, never again. Well, I say they are again. All right, uh, no need to make believe. Uh, they don't want your fantasy, but reality not to leave, but to lead. They got the songs and lyrics to lead. And chat and the song Chatter in the Room reminds me of the sound of the song Disarm by the Smashing Pumpkins. Well, I gotta say, they have the heavy metal, they have the cheers, they have the shock, they have the rock. The, the meaning of those three words, gold, Frank and cheese, mirror, they have honors, they have love, they have power and it's not over in no in nor crossover they are definitely taking over yeah just like um according to the lyrics of the song from taking over saying get up stand tall if we fall then we fall together take a shot the best you've got we won't stop and we're taking over yes that's the quote of the song from the from the gfm band they are taking over <laughs> To Baggy, Lulu, CJ, um, you brighten the day. You have the pedal to the metal with faith, shock, cheer, delight, and devotion. That you have, you are wise. You are loyalty. Most importantly, you are family. Keep up what you do best. All the rocks that request. You are east. I am west. With words we say, make the day. Keep post. Share coast to coast. I'll share the songs coast to coast with beauty that rocks. It ain't over till it's over 
and you are taking over. Without a doubt, Maggie, Lulu, CJ, music you share, take care. From, from El Paso to Jacksonville, over and out. All right. How is it? Thank you. How is it? Yeah, good, man. Awesome job. All right. And um, I can I can have time for one more. It won't take long. <laughs> okay. And um, this um, this next poetry um, it was uh, it was um, three months ago. Um, it was a dear friend of mine uh, from the Rio Grande Valley of McAllen, Texas. Amazing singer songwriter. It's based on my birthday poems on Facebook, and I think you'll like this one. It's called Lauren Ashley in parentheses Corzine. <clears throat> she is the she is the Aquarius of the mutable, the amethyst, meaning faithfulness, modesty, and spiritually linking to the element air and the violet primrose of the violacy. It's because her birthday is on the 18th day, on the second month in the year 1996 born and raised in the Rio Grande Valley of McAllen, Texas. From a thriving scholar to her successful rise to fame as an up and coming country singer songwriter, she, she embodies a woman full of drive for success. Her favorite color, blue, resembles from a Texas traditional state flower called blue bonnet to a cause, lighted up blue, representing autism awareness day slash month, in the month of April. The, these, this color reminds me of the songs from Blue by Leanne Rhymes to When the Stars Goes Blue by The Chorus and Bono of U2. She symbolizes beauty, empathy, prominence, independence, coming and goings, harmony, reliability, creativity, unity, solitude, keepsake, serenity, complexity, flexibility, portrait, faith, friendship, and family. Well, Miss Corzine, my friend, here's to another year of experience. Wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Keep up what you do best as a up and coming uh, country Americana singer songwriter until we meet again. Hope all is well. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, Dan the man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, really. All right. <laughs> Well, um, you guys can, um, all right, I'll have, I'll have this into my poetry slam uh, sometime later this week, could be uh, Thursday or Friday, but I can't wait to share this to uh, the GFM band, um, Maggie, Lulu, and CJ in Jacksonville. And uh, I'm also gonna share this to, uh, to Ms. Corzine uh, in, in McGowan, Texas. Uh, she, uh, she's gonna, they're gonna like this one, so. Yeah, and I know I, I announced them ahead of time that I was going to do the G, uh, the poetry to the GFM band. And yep. Okay, so be aware next Monday, I will have a, a birthday tribute, uh, a poetry to to uh, bodybuilder, uh, uh, bodybuilder, uh, model, fitness trainer, and El Paso Zone, Lizzie Martinez, her birthday's next Friday. So um so I'm gonna I'm gonna need your birthday shout outs. So please, all right. So anybody, I'll, I'll just go. Uh, I'll explain about that later. So, all right. So uh, again, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and and also like my page on Facebook. And um, and don't forget to find the Animans Weekly on YouTube. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate appreciate having you. Um, I like that you had to warn us that you're gonna do a tribute next week. But um, yep. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, keep it moving on. So what I'm gonna do is go back to to the list. We uh, when we started, a, a lot of people weren't here yet. So I just want to make sure um, check in and see if anyone's on the chat that maybe I missed. But also, thanks guys for tuning in. Those of you who are on YouTube. Um, I really appreciate the comments. I'm sure the performers do as well. Uh, it's cool to see that support. And if you guys, if we have enough time, you know, we might have some extra spaces too for you guys to to share something. If you want to read, just uh, send us an email or uh, contact us through any of our social media pages and I'll, I'll try and get you a link so you can join as a last minute entry. That would be pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna go back a uh, quick, quick roll call. Thanks Richie. Okay, later Dan. 
All right. So uh, Swiggy, uh, we have here uh, early on the list, a comedian from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I don't know if they ever made their way to the chat. Just a quick roll call, though. No Swiggies in the house. Okay. Uh, let's see. Isaac from Shift Car had to drop out last minute, unfortunately. But it's nice to, to always have him here. I actually saw him participating on another live stream last week. So it's cool to see him getting out there and uh, sharing his music. Uh, Nini, we have a uh, Nini signed up to play perform some improv music. I don't uh, suppose you're here on the chat. No, Nini. All right. Hopefully she finds her way up here. Oh, we also had D sign up. D signs. She read last week uh, for the first time. I do not see her though, so she's not here in the chat either. Um, hopefully she finds her way as well. Um, let's see. So if we're going down, Justine had to drop out, unfortunately. Uh, Kit, is Kit with us still? Yeah, you're here. Um, you always bring the fire. I haven't even had a chance to share any of your videos yet, but uh, we have we have plenty from you. Uh, Kit, yo, let's let's have you do your thing. Let's make some noise and welcome him to the stage. All right. How are we feeling? Did I unmute? Yes, I did. Good. Always got to check. You always got to check because you never know. Okay. Uh, well, since we had so many people back out, I'm going to stretch out a little bit. I'm going to do four of mine and then a cover. Are you cool? Okay. All right. These are varying degrees of good. Some of them are bad, but you just have to bear with me. The happy moments tend to dissolve. They are not models of strength. They tarnish and erode under rainwater. I remember a perfect day from summer 2010 where nothing survived. Two friends got married and with a haste designed to stymie complaints. And I and my plus one walked to the universal church, noting the maypole the local pagans set up across the way and laughed, imagining the fight certain to happen over that. Their Spartan ceremony was just as special as a royal one, and we made plans of our own. Not that kind of plan, but we were set to take over their lease when they moved for grad school. They aren't together anymore. I don't know what happened. I no longer feel close enough to ask, and they haven't asked either why we aren't together. We didn't even get the lease. Someone somewhere broke a protocol. None of that day survived, not even the maypole. Nothing except this ragged pulsing in my neck and my wrist and behind my knees and deep in this scarred trunk that says, maybe the next one will. Put the coin back into the slot. You may never get the jackpot, but no one loses in love, only pushes. You'll always get your quarterback. All right. Wait for the stupid page to load. All right, here we go. This one's okay. I am changing all of my drafted memoir back into poetry because too many of you know my business. I want the ritual of public confession, but I don't want you to know what I did. I am much more comfortable answering what does this mean than what happened next. I want this poem to rise from the ground like a monolith, not between us, but beside us, and for us to circle around it, inspecting for the flaws that I have mistaken for nuance and character. Okay. All right. This one, this one's more of a prose poem, got a hint of sci-fi to it, but just a hint. Well, more than a hint. I, I don't know how to measure things. That's why I'm not a cook. The Andromedan delegation, cocksure and azure, is optimistic ahead of the first truly representative Miss Universe competition. 
the betting markets do not share that optimism. Clea Larkonomit has a bipedal build and a striking bright blue face. She has been celebrated for her bravery in Teen Vogue in a feature piece with patronizing overtones that may have hardened her model stees into an actual scowl. There is a sizable Tumblr slash fit community around her. And while her Twitter messages are bitter and hostile, that happens to be what plays best on Twitter. There's a question Earth's media has breezily skipped over that Clear asks her agent, her handler, and her politician brother. Why the fuck do I have to prove myself to these pink and brown gawkers? Her agent tells her the money. Her handler tells her the exposure. Her brother rambles incoherently, something about Andromedan pride and intergalactic harmony, which sounds like a flat out contradiction. She isn't lonely or forsaken. She even has some advantages, but some people don't even like redheads. Join me in saying a soft and hopeful prayer for Clelar as she faces down our planet's insensate drive to make everything look like us. Okay, uh, another slightly sci-fi prose poem. I don't know, I found, I found a niche that I'm the only one in. So I'm gonna get nice and comfy, I guess. The zoning committee has been working around the clock, availing themselves of even the extra 37 minutes. The issue is a silly one, but it's one with billions of dollars staked on it regardless. Owing to the nature of Mars reduced gravity, how far away from residential neighborhoods must the proposed stadium for the expansion franchise Mars City Rovers be built in order to prevent unusual amounts of property damage from flying baseballs? The meetings have been contentious, detail-oriented, inscrutable, and unproductive. At this point in the young history of Mars City, not even a generation on, the pioneer's dream of leaving Earth's problems on Earth seems tragically naive like a virus praying earnestly for its next host to be tougher. All right. And that was all me. I'm gonna close the way I like to do, what I like to do at these, at these open mics. We'll end the ones in meat space when they happen again. Yes, I like to either open or close with a poem by someone else, a cover poem. Musicians do it all the time. Why can't poets? It's not fair, it's an imbalance. I'm trying to address it. Uh, this is uh, What Kind of Times Are These by Adrian Rich. Her birthday was just on Saturday, so it seems appropriate. There's a place between two stands of trees where the grass grows uphill, and the old revolutionary road breaks off into shadows near a meeting house abandoned by the persecuted who disappeared into those shadows. I've walked there picking mushrooms at the edge of dread. But don't be fooled, this isn't a Russian poem. This is not somewhere else, but here. Our country moving closer to its own truth and dread, its own ways of making people disappear. I won't tell you where the place is, the dark mesh of the woods meeting the unmarked strip of light, ghost-ridden crossroads, leaf mold paradise. I know already who wants to buy it, sell it, make it disappear and I won't tell you where it is. So why do I tell you anything? Because you still listen. Because in times like these, to have you listen at all, it's necessary to talk about trees. Yeah, right on. That's ah, it's a good selection, man. I, I always choose some really good cover poems. I think you're well qualified to choose covers. That's the other thing. I, I don't know if anyone can just like choose like cover poem. Like you, you've done a pretty good job of selecting thematically and and uh, appropriately timed poems. So thank you for that, Kit. Also, uh, uh, thank you, Richie, for everything you're doing, man. Yeah. So what are you sipping on there? This is the blood and honey. 
I have a, on deck. I have this weird mango polenta. I don't know how I feel about it yet. <laughs> and marble double white. So I'm prepared. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely have my open mic drinks uh, on deck. Uh, I had a last no two weeks ago. I, uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of went overboard a little bit. <laughs> I had about 13 beers by the time it was over and I had my first quarantine hangover. It was interesting, but, uh, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore, you know, uh, but I am enjoying a nice Lagunitas right now. A uh, nice little, little punch to it, but, uh, Kit as always appreciate you. I'll probably share one of your, your pieces this week. Uh, again, one of the things I'm going to start doing is, is taking segments of people's work and put posting on our Instagram page. So if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram, uh, El Paso Bwams, or you can just type in Barbed Bar Open Mic Series and it should show up so you can see some of the content we're posting there. And uh, by the way, you know, if this isn't your thing, um, which it's not the end of the world, it's, uh, it's not as bad as it seems um, in the end, you know, but if you guys still want to share work, but maybe you're a little nervous about coming on front of a screen and sharing your work. Um, I do have at least two other ways you can participate uh, during this pandemic. One is a radio show type thing called Spacious Solidarity. Now, uh, I have episode one out. Um, if you guys have seen our newsletter that's been going around, there's a link. You can also find episode one on YouTube. You can also find it on Spotify uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, any of those sources, you can just type in uh, Spacious Solidarity, Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. And uh, it's a collection of poets and musicians who've sent me their work so so they can share it so we can hear it. Uh, volume two is already in the works. It's been like already a few weeks in, in, in process, but uh, uh, I'm going to finish it pretty soon. I already have enough content for almost volume three, but if you guys want to, you can email us your content. So if you have any poems that you'd like to share or any songs that you have recorded, um, send them send them our way and we'll put them on our radio show so we can highlight them. And the third way in which you can participate is just a very simple virtual mic. Um, and it's really just, it's all on you. So you can post uh, a video of you sharing your piece and just tag us. You know, you can do the hashtag virtual mic. Uh, I encourage you to use the hashtag, hashtag BWOMS. And uh, it's a cool way to, to share with our network. And, and we'll probably put it out there and, and distribute it and share it. So if you have any questions, you can always message us about these things. Um, uh, so we're going to continue with tonight. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys for sticking around. Everyone who's here in the Zoom chat with us and everyone who is on the YouTube chat. Hey, Richie. Dan. Um, I didn't get a chance to. Uh, I didn't get a chance to say something real quick. You didn't say it all. All right, go ahead. Uh, what, what, what do you got to say? Um, does everybody remember the the three hundred six sessions concert series? Everybody. Um, yeah, Richie, you do. You you know you know this very well. Okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know the three hundred six has very uh, wonderful artists around El Paso, like Radio La Chusma, Robbie, um, um, Coyote Blue. And uh, among other, among others, and especially one Las Cruces and uh, and the Juarez all over the borderland. But uh, what happened is the 306 is in peril. Um, they they are going through an unprecedented and difficult time. They didn't even expect. We thought we were going to resume as soon as the quarantine's over. But then we're uh, we're it's been a gathering place for the artistic community. And now we are asking everybody, especially everybody in the community, to help gather uh, to help support um, our beloved local institutional uh, through this uh, through this uh, time of the COVID-19. So uh, the GoFundMe page has already been set. So um, I will leave the link right down there. If anybody, uh, you can ask them, please help. Um, and if you also want to um, donate, um, if you, also, you can donate there. Also go to the, go to um, the, the G306 sessions on Instagram and Facebook and um, you'll see everything and especially um, there's a video right there uh, with featuring Changa touring the 306 so I'm going to leave all the info right there so please help okay all right thank you Richie I apologize go ahead get back to you and uh, I need I need your birthday shout outs later for my birthday finally I've been waiting. I've, I've been waiting years, you know, for for Dan to do a birthday tribute for me. But you know, finally, yeah. it's happening. 
uh, I, I need I need a birthday shout out to Lizzie. So uh, uh, at the end of the show, uh, so at the end of the show. Yeah, my birthday is coming up too, Dan. Oh shoot! I didn't just saying. Know. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I, well, it is, but let's go. Like, we got to continue on with the show. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah. So just to kind of uh, jump on top of his, his commentary, though, through Successions is a very important, like, grassroots platform that was created several years back. It was intended, it's intended to highlight and showcase musicians uh, throughout our region and people coming through. Um, it's really important to me because, you know, we started it years back with Chang and, and uh, we were able to make it on TV on PBS. So, you know, if you guys have an opportunity to go check out through successions and donate anything you can, it's much appreciated. Um, yeah. Thank you, Dan, for sharing that. Um, you know, always, always supporting people. So that's, that's really like the magic in all this is it's, it doesn't mean anything unless we have community and can help one another out. So uh, yeah, thanks for, for sharing that message. We are going to go ahead and continue, um, you know, someone who's actually very instrumental in this entire process, you know, barbed wire open mic series has been around since 2007. And uh, during that time, we we've become part of a project. Uh, we become a project under the banner of border senses, border senses, which is a local nonprofit organization. And uh, one of the co-founders is up next. And, uh, you know, this guy, he's done a lot. He's an awesome writer as well. He came, he came to the UTEP MFA. Uh, and we have a really cool project as well that we started, which uh, I'll let him advertise. But we have Amit, gosh, in the house. Amit, you want to go ahead and take things away and do your thing? Let's see. Let's unmute you. Yeah. Amit in the house. Let's go and give him a round of applause. I think <laughs> these these are always finicky. Let's see, um, it in the house. So, well, well, we wait for him to get on. Let's see. Let me make sure. He is unmuted, but his microphone doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's weird. Like today was the very first day ever. Yeah, Amit, I see you talking, but your 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 mic isn't on. We can see you talking, but um, it's not it's not coming out. That's weird. That happened to me today too. I don't know what's going on. Like it was my first time today, actually, uh, having mic issues as well. So, do you want to maybe try uh, check your 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 microphone connections? And make sure it's maybe your your built-in microphone. Hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing yet. It's okay. This this happened. It's live. You know. Uh. So. Hmm. Do you want to maybe try exiting and joining the chat again, and see if that might. And then and then when you enter, join with your computer audio. Okay, yeah. So he says he's gonna reboot and get back. Um, that's fine. Technology that happens, yo. You know, we can't predict it. It goes haywire. I had, like I mentioned, I had my own technical issues. So while he does that, uh, let's go ahead and maybe have an opportunity to see if we can get some music. I know that. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure you guys are, are ready for us too, though. Uh, Bells and the Daddies, are, are you here with us still? I see Melody. How are you? Do, do you guys, uh, are you guys ready to go on, possibly? We're good to go. We're good to go, Richie. Awesome, yeah. So uh, we haven't had too, any music yet so far. So I'm really excited. And, and these guys are really awesome. Uh, we're going to, if you guys want to go ahead and play a couple songs like we talked about, let's go ahead and, and welcome them to the stage. Thank you. We're going to try so, not to screw up. <laughs> we're really excited because we... Um, these are our originals, these are our babies. So you get to hear two of them. This first one was written by um, Edie Karuna. Uh, she wasn't able to be with us today, but this one was written by her and it's an amazing song about toxic love. She did provide us with a track, so. Yes, so Edie is remote and we'll be playing Edie's bass while we're <laughs> So Edie's with us in spirit. Ready? Okay. Sorry. I'm gonna play. Sorry guys, we're having a tiny little bit of 
an audio problem. Hold on, just a second. That was cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll try the next one. We'll this one the next one we've got. We got this. All right. So the next one we're really excited about, too, another original. This one I wrote. Um, and you'll just put in everything else. <laughs> Basically, she's saying I, she wrote the lyrics and made me write a song around her lyrics. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> That's it. This is called Snake Bite.
Yeah, right on. That was cool. I mean, you guys had to like figure out a way to like place the band without the whole band there for one. That's so hard. <laughs> this is super hard. I can't even, barely hearing what I where I can hear what we recorded on the bass. What ED records very hard to hear, but it's <laughs> we made it through. Um next time we'll figure out better, a little we'll we're getting there. We'll, we'll figure out a better way to do this, but thank you for cool. the thank opportunity you. though. Thank you. Can yeah, we for plug sure. The bands really quickly. Yes, please plug yourselves. Okay, so we are Bells and the Daddies, and then at Bells and the Daddies on both Facebook and Instagram, and then this guy here is in some amazing bands too. Oh, <laughs> I'm also doing a, a band called Mexitanics. Check us out; you'll see us sometime soon. And La Chapuza, uh, we're writing up some um, new material coming out with the CD soon, and, and as soon as all this is over, we'll be back in California as well. Um, oh. Oh, um, so I am also uh, the executive director of Square Peg Youth Empowerment. We're holding really cool summer youth classes for parents as well. So if you guys get the opportunity at Square Peg Youth, Facebook and Instagram, please take a look. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you guys. You, you made it happen. You know, uh, the music sounds great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, show some love. You guys can unmute if you want to show some love really quick. I'll let you guys do that. Very cool. Very cool. I almost did a whole thing where I, I was going to talk unmuted. It happens. All right. Um, so, yeah, Bells, the Daddies, check them out on, on the social media as well. Um, all right. Amit, where you're back in the chat. Let's see if if maybe that, that reboot did some. Oh, actually, he's not in the chat anymore. <laughs> yeah, he actually. So recently he had issues with his, his laptop. It died. He completely lost his laptop, so he's kind of using like a, an older, an older one. It's very slow, so he might be having some issues. Uh, we'll see if he if he makes his way back to that. But I saw that we had Lupe Blue in the house, uh, very avid supporter. But today she signed up to perform, uh, so I'm really excited where where we're at with this. Um, last she was here a couple weeks ago on the YouTube chat, supporting, commenting. And so I always love it when when someone you know just wants to come and share something. We we probably also peer pressured her a little bit into it. Uh, let's find out. So Lupe Blue, you with us still? Yeah, I'm here. All right, welcome. Do your thing. <laughs> how, 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 are you, how are you doing today, by the way? Hey, Victoria. Hey. Oh, hey, Dan. <laughs> how you are guys? you? I'm good. How about you? Okay. Hey, uh, as soon as you're done, can I get you the video birthday shout out um, in a bit? Um, Dad, okay. Dad, this is what the chat's for. Not, well, not. Yeah. Let me record. Hold on. Okay. It's <laughs> just like we're at the Orchid. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm so happy because I, I tuned in right when Melody was singing and oh my God, that was awesome. I, I did not expect to see you guys. Um, that was my first time hearing you sing, Melody. So that was super exciting. You sing beautifully. Can you guys hear me okay? Richie, can you? Okay. I have headphones on. Like I don't know if I, how good my audio is. Um, all right. So I had two short poems and an acapella song to sing. Is that? Yeah. Be okay to go with all three? Okay, cool. Um, so this first one is called Timely Treats and it is timely. That's, you know, it's um, came from some ponderings, of course, with everything happening. It's, it's more of, a, of a, a gratitude kind of poem. So, sweet disconnection to reconnect to what matters, to find solace and silence and tend to the garden that helped you grow. Sweet slow down to remind you that your worth is not defined by your productivity, but by the love you allow to flow to and from you. Sweet distance to give you perspective of what you've cultivated so far, while allowing you to weed out what doesn't let you flourish. Sweet surrender to remind you that control is just an illusion and that there's beauty in the unknown. May we follow May we allow ourselves to disconnect, slow down, 
distance ourselves from what no longer nourishes us and surrender to new beginnings. <laughs> um, th this next one, my, um, you know, I, I, I live with my grandpa. I help take care of him. He's like my dad. He helped raise me. Right now he's in the hospital. So if I could get some prayers, good vibes, you know, any of that. Um, I'm feeling, you know, pretty positive. I think he's doing better. So um, anyway, this, this poem actually kind of came from a conversation we were having while I was driving him to the doctors before he went to the hospital yesterday, actually. Um, and, you know, when, when, once uh, some people get to a certain age, they're just kind of like, yeah, I don't want to try anymore. I'm tired of going to the hospital over and over. And, and I try to respect that and be grateful for, you know, the time that I've had with him. But at the same time, he's like my dad. So, you know, I got to pressure him to, to get better and be more positive and, and maybe live a little longer, you know? And <laughs> so uh, as I was driving him to the, to the doctor's office, I was like, hey, you got to help me fill out this book that I bought that's about grand memories of your grandpa and you telling me about your first time doing this and that and blah, blah, blah. Because that's what that, you know, it's one of those books that they sell at Barnes and Noble. And uh, I haven't had a chance to help, you know, fill it out. So I'm just kind of giving him these little reasons to, to stick around a little longer. Um, but, you know, I understand that you, they, they get frustrated at some point. But this is another um, ode to gratitude that I, that I have for the stories that he shares with me and just, just about our journey. So... Before I became a drop in the ocean, you sailed the waters to beautiful places, and little did you know that the sea and everything it leads to would inspire me to explore too. So many places I've yet to see, and yet I'm humbled for the memories you've invited me into. Where soda jerks served smiles and 1934 Ford Coupes drove you to a daydream. Our trip doesn't stop here. You have to help me fill out the blanks in the book of your recollections. We have to drive past these strange turns and find ourselves somewhere more inviting. Thank you for allowing me to fuel your tank, for letting me be your passenger on this remarkable voyage. We have much to look forward to as we find our way without a map or directions. Okay, this acapella song I'm going to sing was really just to, um, I'm not even going to say what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a throwback to the 90s. I think it's the 90s. So I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> I haven't heard it in a while. I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. I am waiting on the counter for the man to pour the coffee. And he fills it only halfway. And before I even argue, he is looking out the window at somebody coming in. It is always nice to see you, see, says the man behind the counter to the woman who has come in. She is shaking her umbrella and I look the other way as they are kissing their hellos and I'm pretending not to see them. Instead, I pour the milk. I open up the paper, there's a story of an actor who had died while he was drinking. It was no one I had heard of. And I'm turning to the horoscopes and looking for the funnies when I'm feeling someone watching me. And so I raise my head. There's a woman on the outside looking inside. Does she see me? No, she does not really see me cause she sees her own reflection. And I'm trying not to notice that she's hitching up her skirt. And while she's straightening her stockings, her hair has gotten wet. Oh, this rain, it will continue through the morning as I'm listening to the bells of the cathedral. I am thinking of your voice. And of the midnight picnic once upon a time before the rain began. And I finish up my coffee. Oh, I'm singing this part wrong. <laughs> and I finish up my coffee. And it's time to catch the train. 
I try to fade out. I don't know if that came out in the headphones. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that, that was that was a jam. Suzanne Vega. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that actually came out in 1987. Oh shit. Uh, yeah. I only know because it I only know because it's my birth year. Wow. Dang. But uh but yeah, it's a it's a really catchy song. I think most of us know that. Do, 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 do. Um, and also, it's it's uh, Tom's Diner, which is a a real restaurant in New York City, and is also the basis for Monk's Cafe in Seinfeld universe. So oh. it's a cool little a cool little tie in there. If you guys are ever in New York City, you have Tom's Diner, um, and and the sh the great hit show Seinfeld. You know the places they were hanging out. That's Tom's Diner, of course, and the show was called Monk's Cafe. So cool little trivia. I didn't know um, that. Yeah. Speaking of plugins, I want to do a, a local product placement and say I'm just really uh, kind of I'm enjoying this tea that my friend Valerie made. Her business name is I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Inanna's Delight. I N A N N A S uh, apostrophe S Delight. So if you look her up on Facebook, and the tea that I'm drinking is uh, Nurture the Matriarchy. And it has raspberry, uh, raspberry leaf, rose hips, holy basil, hawthorn, elderberry, and echinacea. So, a uh, toast to you guys. Thank you so much. Salute. Thank you, Lupe Blue. That's your stage name, even though you're. Uh, you're... Yeah. <laughs> my real name's Victoria, but uh, Guadalupe is my la is my middle name. That's my grandma's name. Um. So yeah. That's I actually really love my middle name, even though it's not on my my Facebook. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Uh, and of course, um, sending good vibes uh, to your, to your grandfather. Thank you. you know, um, during these times, so definitely enjoy enjoy having you on, and, and hope to have you on more. I really also enjoyed like your point. You killed it all on all fronts: the singing, the poetry. Aww. Hope <laughs> Thank, to have you back. For sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Right on. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so quick. Um, Dan. Just quick, Dan. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Victoria. Hang on. Are you still here? Yeah. Okay. Give me a minute. Give me one second. Let me, uh, let me <laughs> zoom you real quick. Yeah, are you really going to, you're literally going to record a okay, segment on, on the show? Okay. okay. All okay. I need you to do, all I need you to do is, uh, uh, Say you're Victoria Molinar, you want to wish Lizzie Martinez a happy birthday. Okay. Who? Damn. Lizzie Martinez. Lizzie. Okay. Lizzie. Okay. I'll give you the thanks. Hold on. Go. Hi, Lizzie. It's Victoria Molinar. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I hope your life is filled with many blessings and many, many more years. Mwah. Perfect. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. I reach out, wait for you in a bit, okay? Okay, cool. Thanks, Thank man. Thank you for providing we're, us. With we're the, giving you all the full El Paso experience. The, the flu black work, the full black work. It's always like. Yep. <laughs> awesome, man. All right. So now the third time's the charm. We have Amit in the house. I think uh, you probably tried your phone now, right? So let's see. I gave Amit a big intro couple performers ago let's see if we can get you on right now man um all right you're unmuted hey yeah hey how are you doing you guys <laughs> are you getting me now yeah man we got you i'm it's in the house let's go ahead and give him a round of applause and welcome him to the stage hey hey victoria uh so yeah so the two both my laptops failed so now i'm on my phone so hopefully this will work i don't know what happened to the laptops today all right, so um, anyway, um, as Richie said um, about the barbed wire border senses, we go back a long time on all these things. But what I want to just briefly talk about before I read anything is that Richie and I are working on a project called Life in the Time, where we are collecting stories of the stories, pictures, videos, songs of the coronavirus time. So if anybody wants to you know, publish something on our website. 
uh, Richie, can you type the website on the, my arm on the phone is hard. Can you please type the website, please? Yeah, I got There's you. I got, website, I got right? you. It's on there. Okay, lifeinthetime.com. So please, uh, uh, you know, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. I would, would love to hear your thoughts and ideas. And um, if you have any questions, reach out to Richie or me, and we'll be glad to talk about that with you. Looking forward to getting some contributions from you all. Anyway, so I, I am going to read, uh, I don't know, three poems, I think. Three very different ones. I was trying to go through my pile of things and I found three things that don't really match at all, but, um, but we'll see where there is a match somewhere, right? Um, one was written years ago and one was written last week and something in the middle. So we'll see, we'll see how it all works out. So the, you know, it's getting pretty hot here in spite of the coronavirus time. And, um, and I was thinking, um, I was to live on Hampshire, which is by Mission Hill. And uh, I, was, I thought of this, I don't know why, but I thought of the rain. We had a crazy rain one year, 2006, August 1st. Anybody remember that rain? They called it the 100 year rain. Um, and it was, it, was, uh, it was quite something. Um, so I, I had written this poem at that time or sometime after that, but I, I had never read it, so I'm gonna read this. It's called Arroyo, dry river bed, uneven rocks on a horrid summer day, flock of sparrows fly above, do not stop. No water here on the cracked landscape, drained and lifeless. Then rain, slow at first, dark sky, big fat drops that land on rocks. Reminds me of monsoon rain of where I come from, India. The Arroyo grateful as water fills its belly. Slowly, little green plants, happiness for life begins. Emotion rises as two hearts begin to beat as one. Thank you. Uh, here is a poem that I wrote sometime back, I don't even remember when. And it goes like this. Saw a three-year-old on Ellen who knew about Burkina Faso and Laos as everyone talks about Paris and London. The former have poor PR, the latter market the shit out of themselves. But the three-year-old doesn't make any distinction. I'm not three, nor am I a geo genius. 25 years ago, I couldn't find El Paso on a map. I lived in Boston, believed in the New, York po poster, New Yorker poster, but there was the East and the West and the wasteland in between of the United States. Now I live in that wasteland, in the Southwest, in the border. I live in a beautiful place where the US and Mexico meets, where we all come together in El Paso. Thank you. And this is the last one. Each morning, I stare at the, found, at the mountain as the sun splashes its colors. For years I've gone out, tried to speak, but the words got lost. The echoes grew dimmer in the wind. I went back inside, waited for another day. My beliefs, my thoughts, my ideas conflicted. And then one day I spoke and the words ricocheted off the mountains and reach back to my ears. Si se puede. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm it. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Was that good? It's cool, man. I, I I love El Paso too. You know. There you go. There you go. Yeah, and um, so um, yeah, th those are the three poems, and and uh, thanks, Ricky, for doing this, and um, I hope we can keep on doing keep on doing this as long as this virus lasts or whatever. <laughs> but again, life in the time, guys, check it out. See if you can participate. Would love to have you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. And yeah, check out lifeinthetime.com. It uh yeah, look through. There's there's stories. There's already a lot of people who have submitted writing. There's some photography. There's artwork. artwork. There's there's multimedia. And uh honestly, you guys should submit. There's no requirements. You don't have to have a degree or have to be a published writer or anything. You know, submit anything that you feel pertains to to how your life is is right now during during all these times during the pandemic how have you had to adjust um you know and, and also how are you responding to it through art through any medium that you have uh, we do have a place for you guys to submit it's a cool place to get published you know get get published get out there it's very global we do have people who have submitted from around the globe inc including you know uh, Amit mentioned India. We have some a really good posts from Kolkata, India. Uh, we also have someone who submitted from Palestine. We have people who have submitted from all over the world. So be part of that conversation. And we'd love to see your submissions, guys. <clears throat> and uh, all right. So I'm looking at the list here. Uh, we do have Chris Robinson here in the chat now. Earlier, I totally misread your, your YouTube name. Chris Robinson would back in the day would go to to uh, many can call you the the acoustic poet because you would never use the microphone and you didn't need it. So uh, it's cool to have you on the chat. If you want to share a piece or two, uh, you're totally welcome. Chris, do we still have you with us? It's Amit. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Can we see you though? Oh, it's not showing. Ah, there you are. All right, yo, there you are. Let's make some let's make some noise and welcome Chris Robinson to the space. Hello, everybody. First off, uh, big shout out to B Wams. Um, used to enjoy doing this every Monday while I lived in El Paso, and it's actually really good to be back. Um, so I'm gonna do a really short piece, and then I'm gonna mute it because uh, there's other people to do this. So, um. In a time where hand sanitizer is actually taking over what used to be the norm, where we go home and every five seconds we need to wash filth that we don't have on our hands off of us, where toilet paper has become a way of buying things and trading things and selling the things that, that get us by. I hope that one day I have the strength to remove this skin and show what's underneath me. Show that regardless of what a pandemic can do and what words from people that I'll never meet live in white houses, what effect they don't really have on me. I go to sleep and I wake up, I shower, I go to work sometimes. Other times it's teleworking because people are so concerned that if you don't cover your face, you'll spread something. The same thing happened during the epidemic of the flu. Now it's round two. It's amazing what can happen when the world finally decides that it's had enough of us. Maybe we should have paid attention a long time ago. That's all I got. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thanks for sharing that. That's a, uh... Some foreboding lines there, right? Maybe we should have been paying attention. And it's crazy how many people uh, have decided not to and disregard the information we've been given. <laughs> but I uh, appreciate having you, man. Um, all right. So now is the time. This has actually been a really fun show. I've enjoyed everyone going on. I know that some people, especially those on the East Coast, uh, it's getting late, so so they're signing off. But uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of time. I mentioned that, uh, you know, I'm looking at the list here. Is there anyone here in the Zoom chat? So I'm calling upon you guys right now. 
Is there anyone that's here with us that signed that maybe didn't sign up, but maybe wants to perform? And again, I want to thank you guys on YouTube for tuning in. Uh, I've really appreciated this. I think this has been our most active YouTube live chat. So, I mean, I think it's cool to see people interacting, show that they're listening. A lot of you guys were getting clap emojis while you were performing. So let's see. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone else is here. So check it out. Right now, uh, we're on our Zoom meeting. After the live stream ends, I encourage anyone who's in the Zoom chat to stick around. It's usually just a, a little social time, you know, a little quick little conversation, catching up with people. It's, it's been kind of nice. Th those of you in the YouTube chat, if you guys, you know, really want to be part of our virtual audience, you guys, even if, if you don't want to perform, we can invite you next time to the Zoom chat just so you can be part of the chat and, and be part of our the chat going on. And, and also if you want to like clap for people and all that. <clears throat> so. If you guys want to perform in your other chat, let me know. I'm going to, I'm going to perform a couple pieces then. This is uh this is the other cool thing about um, these yeah. virtual mics. I don't feel as guilty going on. <laughs> so yeah. Um, by the way, so we have a uh, professor Lester there on YouTube chat asking when are these shows? So these shows for the time being are going to be every Monday. I just feel like that's a, that's an easy day of the week. Uh, well, maybe not easy, easiest, but Mondays, there's not a whole lot going on. A cool way to start the week. Mondays are usually already kind of like, bleh. Although I don't know if that means anything these days, if, if you're, you're staying at home and all that, if you have the luxury, right? But culturally, Mondays have always been like the that one day. So if anything, it's cool to try these on Mondays. So we'll be back next Monday and the Monday after that, and then we'll play it by ear, see how, so how, how everything's going. Um, I'm gonna read a piece or two. What I was what I was saying right now is uh, it's nice to be able to share a couple of my pieces. So, <clears throat> when I was coming up in the poetry scene around 2008, um, I got the nickname as as the jazz poet because I would uh, <laughs> my first my my very the very first time I read in public in a public open mic was 2008. So. I was really nervous, I remember. And I wasn't even there to perform. I went to go support a friend. And uh, and unlike a lot of other people, I showed up like early to the event. I showed up very early and and I was persuaded to to sign up. So I went home, printed out some poems and, and the rest is history. I've been able to come out and perform more and, and do this, it's really fun. <clears throat> so as I got more comfortable, I started bringing out my saxophone. And I would I would perform saxophone with poetry. It was really like out there, maybe not out there. Like I think like the Beat Generation, the Beat Nicks, Jack Kerouac playing performing poetry with uh, Zoot Sims and Alcon. You know, it's a really cool album, by the way. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, but I would I would like read a line of poetry and then I play something on my sax and then like go back and forth. <clears throat> so I got the nickname Jazz Poet when I was coming up, and it really means a lot to me because I, I do think jazz is a very interesting art form to to study um you have to know there's a lot of technical knowledge but this idea of impro improvisation is like the world being able to listen to your to your bandmates to being being able to to listen to what everyone's doing and be in agreement but then also take your time to to shine spotlight you know solo a little bit with what everyone else is playing and then fall back in and, and just you know, if you study the history of jazz, you know, you, you have swing as the, as the big mainstream form in the, in the 30s, you know, these big bands playing all over, but, you know, and they would play for these, these mostly uh, richer audiences, you know, the elite. And most of the, most of the time the musicians were, were not of, of that class. You know, often, often people of color, you know, black musicians. And so to me, there's a revolutionary point where you move from swing to, to, to these underground jazz clubs. All right. These underground jazz clubs where it'd be a quartet or quintet where the musicians could, could focus on their artistry and not so much worry about the big band and the audience, but like take their time to shine. And so I'm really speaking a lot right now. So let me read a little bit. This is a poem called Bebop. 
And it's, uh, it's based on my love for jazz in downtown El Paso and maybe a little place you guys have heard of called The Tap. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> yeah, one of my favorite spots. All right, Bebop. Give me Bebop jazz. Nachos from The Tap and something to write with. That's all I'll need to make it through the night until the next paycheck. Until then, I'll write and I'll write and I'll write and I'll how as the band summons the ghost of Charlie Parker so we can learn how to fly without wings and get hooked on speed. We don't need the high life, but this life is the only one we've ever known. Drinks with friends, jukebox love songs, swaying lovers in a flood of sound, last calls and moments shared. Give me bebop jazz, naturals from the tap and something to write with for life, liberty, and the pursuit of meaningfulness. All right, so that's one poem. <clears throat> and also I've, I've had the, the unique pleasure of getting to actually perform with some of the best jazz musicians in the city. I don't know how that happened, uh, but you know, some of the jazz professors and, and the guys who you see playing downtown at the tap and international, I've had the, the pleasure to perform some of my poetry. So let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find one more poem and then I guess we can end off the show for tonight. Again, we'll be back next Monday. If you guys wanna be kept up to date with everything we have going on, follow us on social media, Barbed Wire Open Mic Series on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We usually post everything there. <clears throat> I'm trying to find, damn, I'm trying to find like a, a cool poem to read. This one's a little sad, but like maybe a lot of people can relate to our life in quarantine. It's about long distance relationships. And, you know, maybe if you guys are adhering to everything, maybe you haven't been able to see that, that person in your life. <clears throat> it's called Heavy Moon. And uh, just as maybe like a, a preface, I do bring up a concept in this poem, uh, the idea of a perigee. So I don't know if you guys are too much too familiar with your astronomical terms. But you know, a perigee is when an object when an object is at its closest point to the Earth. So, this is called Heavy Moon. <clears throat> there are groggy days that sit there, bloated, with abstractions like time or space. When phrases like "I miss you" are just words on a screen. <laughs> Do you ever stop to listen for the music in everyday, in everyday things, like a passing thought or a smile? You know, my heart gets hungry too. Tonight, I possibly couldn't keep up with Neruda or the pull of this heavy moon because it reminds me of you. If you leave a trail of words, I'll follow them back to you just to simply call you and tell you to look at this moon because it reminds me of you, the way it pulls me in as if I could pull out this sky, this midnight pearl and marvel at the thought of our very own perigee. Huh. Leave a trail of words and I'll follow them back to you. Pull me in. I'm yours. <clears throat> All right, that's it. <laughs> I'll share that. That's the last of the pieces that is called Heavy Moon. I actually do have it on my personal YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. YouTube, you guys are awesome. Uh, I'll share the links. The cool thing is that this is going to be around. Um, any last words from anyone there? <laughs> anyone in the chat? Thank you, Reggie. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you, cool. Reggie. Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey, so, Reggie. Can I go ahead and shoot you that? Um, not yet, not yet. Time out. After, right. afterwards, we still got to finish the YouTube chat. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, I love you. Um, hope to hear more of you. Tell your friends. If you, have, if you know anyone who writes, anyone who plays music, tell them to come in, join us. It's not that bad. Um, and I'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, let us know. If you guys are on YouTube right now, thank you. Leave, go and leave a chat. Or sorry, leave a comment for us. Uh, who did you like? Who do you want to hear more of? What do you want to see more of? And we'll see you guys next time for the YouTube live stream. Peace.